I've gone from broke to millionaire, and I'm going to share with you a countdown of my 11 biggest mistakes that if I'd known them at the time, I would have made even more money even quicker. Starting with number 11 is going into business with friends. Now, this seemed like a good idea at the time. We all knew each other. We were good friends. We were like, yeah, let's start a business. We all want to make money. Let's go out into the universe and see if we can make this happen. It was a disaster because you can't make business decisions when you have a friendship with people first. You could develop a friendship with people that you're in business with. You can't really do it the other way around. But what we found is we all had a different expectation of what each other was supposed to be doing, how hard each other would work, and also a different expectation of the speed of results and the scale of the results that we would get. Because of this, it led to a lot of friction early on. I'm working longer than you. I'm working harder than you. I'm doing different stuff to you. You don't understand what I'm doing. And it also made it very difficult to make decisions because we didn't set boundaries in clear lines of engagement before we started the business. During those initial years, it was very stressful because we were trying to maintain our friendships whilst also growing the business. And people say you shouldn't go into business with people that have the same skills. Well, none of us had any skills. There was just pure conflict. Mistake number 10 was underestimating the amount of work involved to start a business and be successful and overestimating the speed at which it would take and the results that I get. Now, I put this one down to entrepreneurial DNA. It's kind of in our genes that we're super excited. And as soon as we get an idea, we're like, yeah, this is going to explode. It's going to be amazing. It's going to happen really, really quickly. And we underestimate the amount of work involved and the amount of consistency and persistent effort that it will take to get maybe a half of what we expect. Impatience is a key trait of successful entrepreneurs, wanting to change things, wanting to change the world, wanting to improve things quickly. But it can also backfire. It can actually eat you alive if you have this massive impatience to see results quickly and not actually have the patience and the consistent effort to put in on an ongoing basis and a long term basis to actually get those results in the first place. Mistake number nine is thinking I could make a million dollars before I became a millionaire. Now that sounds kind of weird. You might think, what on earth are you talking about? Well, it takes a certain type of person to get a million dollars in worth, in value coming in. Back then, I just thought, oh, if I just do a certain number of things or I grow the business in a certain way, I will make a million dollars. I didn't equate millions of dollars with becoming a millionaire and the type of personality it required to do that, the type of effort that it required to do that, and the type of skills, traits, and behaviors that it would take from me in order to accrue a million dollars in worth. This is why when they've done studies of lottery winners, most of them end up broke just how they started because they don't have the wherewithal. They haven't got the mental acuity. They haven't actually got the behaviors or the traits or the skills that will actually enable them to attract and keep that money. It's only when you develop the behaviors, the skills, the habits, the traits, and so on of a millionaire that you actually are rewarded by the universe with a million dollars. Once you've proven you have what it takes, that consistent effort, that ability to never give up, that ability to leverage your time to inspire other people and so on. So when I first started out, I had this mantra of I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, but my activities were not reflecting that. I wasn't improving myself as an individual. I wasn't working on my health, on my wealth, on my mindset. I was just trying to sell stuff to get to a million dollars. And of course, that never works. Mistake number eight is thinking all I had to work on was the business and not myself. I thought, look, if I just throw myself at my business and make sure everything that I do is about my business, I'll get to millionaire status. I could not have been further from the truth because I was sacrificing so much. I wasn't eating a great diet. I would stay in my apartment for days on end. I wasn't exercising. I wasn't feeding my mind or my body with nutritional stuff. And as a result, I was becoming less of a person and not more. And your wealth, your income is a direct reflection of the person you are. I actually found the more time I took out within reason, the better and more effective I became. The more exercise I got, the more energy I got. And all of these micro changes in all areas of my life enabled me to become a millionaire so that I could then actually attract the million dollars. Mistake number seven is thinking I was smarter than I actually was. When I started out in business, I thought, look, I'm great. I know what I'm doing. I've studied marketing. I'm going to get into this. I'm going to change the industry. So I'd look at what everybody was doing online in internet marketing. I thought, no, I don't like that. I don't like those long sales letters. I don't like the way they're selling stuff. I'm going to do it different. I'm going to do it my way. And for two years, I made no money because I was trying to be a pioneer. And if you end up being a pioneer, you'll end up with arrows in your back. Now, this doesn't mean you should copy other people, but you should model proven success because success leaves clues, as Tony Robbins says. And he was one of the mentors that I finally decided to invest with because I realized I could not do this on my own and I must learn from the best.
Hey, Chaniacs, as you may know, I've grown from zero to several million dollars in personal net worth using my internet business. And now I'm on a mission to give away everything that I've learned completely for free. In fact, I'm actually looking for apprentices to take the torch from me and lead it forward to help me leave a legacy. If you think you've got what it takes to become my next millionaire's apprentice, get over right now to growfast.biz. That's growfast.biz. Now back to the show. Now, when I started out, there was a chap online called Cory Rudel, one of the leading internet marketers at the time. Sadly, he's passed away now, but he had a great program back then. I think it was a thousand or two thousand dollars. This was in the early 2000s. And I saw this program, I thought, there's no way I'm going to pay that. What a rip off for all that money just to learn this stuff. No way. So I carried on doing things my own way for those two years and made zero money. And then finally, I stomped up and got his program. Within a few months, I made a ton of money. I was like, I've just wasted two years of my life by trying to keep the money in my wallet rather than investing it in those who've got the t-shirt, those who've already cut their way through the jungle and got to the other side. It's worth all of your money. Know what they did. The good news is I did learn it eventually though. And now I go to the best people in the industry whenever I need help with something. So when I was studying YouTube, I went to a YouTube conference. I met Mr. Beast. I met Eric. I met Ryan Trahan. I met the best YouTubers on the planet. And that's the philosophy that I have for all areas of my business. Find the best people and learn directly from them. Mistake number six was thinking I could outwork everybody. I just thought, yeah, I'm going to outwork everyone. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to work longer. I'm going to get up even earlier. I'm going to stay up even later. And I regularly went several days without leaving my apartment. Weekends didn't exist for me. Back then, when I first started, I was still working a job. So I'd work a job nine to five. I would actually run home at lunchtime so I could get 20 minutes online to try and crack the code of this thing. And then back in the evenings, I would work 6 p.m. till midnight on the business, I would wake up, go to my job, run home at lunchtime. That was the week, Monday through Friday. And then on the weekend, every single waking out was spent on my business. I didn't do anything else. And I did that for two years straight. I thought if I outwork everybody, surely I'm going to get better results. But I was dead wrong. And it was a huge mistake because you can really, really work hard and you can invest 23 hours a day into your business. But if you're doing the wrong stuff, it doesn't matter. Okay. Because you're stuck on that hamster wheel. You think you're making progress but you're not. You're just exerting energy and you're not getting any further forward. And as you're probably starting to tell now, a lot of these mistakes feed into each other. But also on the flip side of the coin, the lessons also help and work together to get you that parabolic curve of increase and success. If you crack the code and hopefully now as I'm going through these and we've still got the bottom five or the top five worst mistakes to come, hopefully now you can see if you put these in place, you can really start to ramp up your results with your business. Let's continue the countdown. So the the fifth worst mistake was not spending any money. Now, I'm from Yorkshire in England, which is famous and notorious for being full of people that don't like to spend money. I also live in Scotland, which is also notorious for people that don't like to spend money. So I'm one of the tightest assed people in the entire world. And when I started my business, I took this mentality with me so I wouldn't spend anything. I kept all the pennies to myself thinking money not spent is money saved. How wrong I was because this was a essentially like me trying to chop my way through the jungle with a blunt axe. And every day somebody would approach me and say, do you want this sharpened axe or do you want me to sharpen your axe for $10? And I would say, no, I've got to keep going. I'm not spending anything. I've got this axe. I can do this on my own and I wouldn't spend or invest any money. That's what it was like looking back. I had this garbage business and I thought, no, I'm not spending any money. I'm going to grow this thing. If I'd invested in the right things earlier on, I would have made so much more money, so much quicker and helped so many more people at the same time. Now, fortunately, the penny finally dropped and I realized I had to invest in myself and I had to invest in my business. And the first major investment I took was a weekend training that cost me $10,000. I didn't have $10,000 back then. I didn't even have $1,000 to my name. I was deep in debt, but I put it on a credit card because I knew this was going to make a difference. And sure enough, within two years of attending that event, that $10,000 had turned into $1 million. The fourth worst mistake I made was seeking opportunities. Yes, I was one of those guys. As soon as I hit a hurdle in my business, something that frustrated me or something that I got bored by, rather than trying to push through that very regularly, I would just look for something else and I would jump ship or change lanes over to something else. Now, if you imagine trying to build a skyscraper, this is the equivalent of putting a brick down. And then when you have a struggle to try and put the next brick on, it's like saying, okay, let's start another skyscraper. So over the years, jumping from opportunity to opportunity, 
opportunity. I ended up with multiple buildings that were just one brick high rather than a skyscraper because I'd start them and then I'd give up and start the next one. Lucky for me, I realized this was a mistake and started changing what I did. And now what I do is what I call the four eyes of business development. The first eye is for infrastructure. You've got to build something that has value. The second eye is to improve what you have. Continually improve it so that people stick around, you have a great customer stick rate and people talk about your business and get you more business. The third eye is for increase. You can finally now increase lead flow and get more prospects and more buyers for the thing that you've worked so hard to improve. And the fourth eye stands for innovate. Once you've actually built the infrastructure, you've improved it and you've increased the lead flow, then and only then should you actually innovate and go and do something new or add a new component to your business. The third worst mistake I made going from zero to millionaire status was thinking that all you needed was a good idea. Now, I think we've been force fed this through Hollywood and various books and movies over the years that all it takes to get rich is just one great idea. What the f is this? I learned this mistake early on because I had an ideas book and I would regularly write a lot of ideas in this book, things that I thought were going to make a difference, going to make me rich and be business changing ideas. But after writing things in my ideas book, two things happened. Firstly, any ideas that I wrote in the book often ended up being way worse when I tried to implement them than I thought in my imagination. Secondly, I hardly implemented any of the ideas. I didn't have time because of my existing business. So if the business is hard, if the business is mundane and repetitive and boring, quite often you'll try and come up with another idea because it's your entrepreneurial DNA that makes you do it. It doesn't mean you should do that idea. I have an ideas book rammed full of so-called great ideas and I don't ever look at it again. I don't touch that thing. It's just to get it out of my head so I can move on and improve my existing business. The second worst mistake I made was being a dumbass at reading. I'd heard this quote early on in my business career that leaders are readers. I thought, what a waste of time. I've got business to do. I've got marketing to do. I've got sales to do. I'm not going to waste my time reading. That was a mistake. Later on in my career, I switched completely and did a 180 and started reading a book a week. I was hooked on consumption and reading. Both of those are wrong. Now, I don't read like most people read books. I read them with a pen. I take notes in the margin. I highlight things. I underline things. And that develops an action plan after I've read the book. We implement that in our business and we're off to the races again, plain sailing. And finally, the worst ever mistake that I made in business is not starting soon enough. I'm actually quite a risk taker in life. I'll take risks. I want to gamble. I want big success. My dad, on the other hand, was very conservative, not a risk taker, saved even more money and was even tighter with money than I was. However, when it came to me jumping ship from my first and last ever job, it was actually my dad that gave me the push. And he said, look, do it now. You don't want to regret and look back. So I did make that leap from employment into entrepreneurship after working just two years in my first and last ever job. But I could have done it even sooner if I was a bit more of a risk taker and I realized that I had what it takes. So I hope you've already got started with your business. And if you need help to grow it, get over to growfast.biz.